All right, as we wrap up uh, unit one, we have two lessons left. Uh, both of them deal with compound inequalities. So a little bit of a change from what we've been doing, but not much really. So a compound word is two words put together. So think doghouse, keyboard, basketball. There's lots of examples. A compound inequality then is two inequalities put together. There are two types of compound inequalities, which is why there's two lessons on this. We're going to look at and inequalities today. And we're going to look at or inequalities tomorrow. All right, so and inequalities. Sorry, let me scroll down here for us real quick so I can get it all in the picture. Find all numbers that are greater than two and less than nine. So inequality number one is numbers greater than two. So that's n is greater than two. And I'm just going to real quick write that with the two first. Alligators eating the n, right? Numbers less than nine. So that would be n is less than nine. I'm going to leave that one alone and you'll see why in a second. They both use the number n or the variable n. We're going to write them together. And I'm going to use this piece and this piece. So two is less than n, which is the first one. And then n again, less than nine. Okay, and that's a compound inequality. Notice how there's a number variable in between two and nine. A solution to this inequality is a number that makes both inequalities true. All right, so since there is an infinite number of solutions, we again need to graph to show all solutions. You might be thinking there's not an infinite number, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those are the only answers. That's not true. I didn't say all integers, I said all numbers. So there's 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, and it can, continues on forever. So there are an infinite number. To graph these, I just wanna do the left side, two, the right side, nine. These are both open in this case, and we're, all the numbers between them. So we're shading between. Okay. Um, pretty easy example of this is uh, high and low temperatures for a day. So Monday's high temperature was 74 degrees and the low temperature was 51 degrees. Show all temperatures from Monday. Well, it makes sense to put the low temperature first because we read left to right. So I'm going to put 51. 74 is the high temperature. So that's on the right. The actual temperature T I'm going to put in the middle. So T is the actual temperature throughout the day, which changed, right? Now T reached 74. It equaled 74. That's why it was a high. It also reached 51. That's why it was a low. And that's why we include the inequality symbols. It reached those temperatures. Okay, so graphing it. Close circle at 51. Close circle at 74. And again, we shade between. All right. Now let's solve the end inequalities. A um, little bit different than our solving a um, few lessons ago. To solve and inequalities, we want to isolate the variable. That's not different. We're used to that. However, the variable is found in the middle of two inequality symbols. These two inequality symbols create three sides to this inequality. Therefore, whatever you do to the middle of the inequality, you have to do the same thing to all three sides of the inequality. So there's an example. Negative four is less than five X, X minus five, which is less than or equal to three. So to isolate that X minus five, I have to add five, right? But I don't want to add five just to one side. I also have to add it to the left side as well. So you see how it gets added kind of three times on the left, in the middle, and on the right. Negative four plus five is one. X is now by itself. Three plus five is eight. Signs did not change, so I left them alone. One, eight, open at one, closed at eight, and that's okay to have that happen. And we shade in the middle of them. That's the front. Let's look at the back now where they get a little bit more challenging. Some different things can happen. All right. 
Negative 12 is less than or equal to 3x, which is less than or equal to negative 3. So we're going to divide by 3. Negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. Less than or equal to, the x is now by itself. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. So negative 4 to negative 1. Close circles on both. And shade in between. You should be getting used to that. We're shading in between on almost all of these. And actually, in fact, we are shading in between on all of these. Number two, a lot more um, going on here. I have to get rid of that fraction. I'm going to multiply by four on all the sides. Negative 13 times four is negative 52. Less than or equal to 3x minus one is left in the middle. And 20 on the right. Add one. Negative 52 plus 1 is negative 51. 21 on the right. Divide by 3. Negative 51 divided by 3 is negative 17. I divided by positive 3, so no sign flip. 21 divided by 3 is 7. Negative 17. 7. Negative 17. Close circle. 7. Open circle. Shade in between. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this. Got a couple more. Distribute here. So negative 8. Nothing's happening to either side right now. 2x plus 10 is less than or equal to 10. Subtract 10. Negative 18. Oops. Not negative 18 yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. Negative 8 minus 10 is negative 18. Is less than 2x, which is less than or equal to 0. Divide by 2. I get negative 9 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 0. 0 is totally fine as a solution. Open at negative 9. Closed at 0. Shade between. Number four, we got a fraction again. Um, on number two, we multiplied first. On this one, we need to subtract the four first because the four is not part of the fraction. So I get 10 is less than two thirds X, which is less than 18. To multiply by three now to get rid of the fraction since the fraction is now by itself. I get 30 is less than two X, which is less than 54. Divide by 2, I get 15 is less than x, which is less than seven, uh, 27. 15 and 27, both open here. And again, we're shading between. Pay close attention to this last one. You, can pro you might be able to guess what's going to happen. I'm going to first subtract the 3. Nothing changes here. I get negative 10 is less than negative 2x, which is less than or equal to 8. If I divide by negative 2, what does that do? Remember what that does with inequalities. Well, before I do any sign flipping, I want you to see what happens. Negative 10 divided by negative 2 makes that positive 5. 8 divided by negative 2, well, x is in the middle, right? 8 divided by negative 2 makes negative 4. In every problem that we've done up until now, the, the smaller number has been on the left and the larger number has been on the right at the end. And that just happened. Look what happened here. The smaller number is on the right, and the larger number is on the left. Now, that should make sense because when you divide by a negative, the sign flips. So I have that sign, and I have that sign, which is not the way we write these. All right? So that that's solve number one. That's what I wanted you to see. 5 is greater than x which is greater than or equal to negative four. But that doesn't make sense. If I graph that, that's not a good number line. Don't do that. Okay. Let's start over on the graph. What I want you to do is I want your signs to be going this way. Always. So I'm going to rearrange this and put it on solve number two. And to do that, I'm going to basically completely swap everything including the sign. So negative four 
the sign's going to go to the other side. So it's going to be less than or equal to. And then it's going to be less than five. And if you look at it, it's really the same thing, right? Because X, between X and five, it's eating the five. Down here, it's doing the same thing. Between X and five, it's eating the five. And then between the X and the negative four, it's eating the X. And between the X and the negative four, it's eating the X. It's the same thing. This is just much easier to graph. So we'll finish it up by graphing. Negative four had the closed circle. And five has the open. And you will be expected to know how to do that. Um, if you have any questions on that, please let me know in class.